You need it. All right, thank you. So I was probably not even born when VisiCalc came out. <laughs> so we're going to talk about where has Excel gone from there. Um, a little plug, go Nevada, come back Kings right now um, in the tournament. So DAX is, like you said, data analysis expressions. It works in SQL, analytical services, Visual Studio, but it also works in Power Pivot in Excel and in a Power BI desktop. It's a programming language that allows you to do functions like in Excel, but also like SQL. Um, so I'm going to give you a scenario here real fast. I have, for my own company, a sales register along with customer information and product information. We're going to load that into the Power Pivot add-on in Excel and then link the tables, creating a relational database behind Excel. So what we're going to do now, we're going to have it add a date table because time intelligence is really important. So Excel Power Pivot will actually add a date table for you. And then you can go in and you can modify it, add a column to, to tell, you, tell it what fiscal year you're on in case you need to do a different fiscal year. So I'm going to do a year-to-date calculation, which is very hard in basic Excel. We're going to take a sales total, and we're going to tell it to take the whole year-to-date using a customized fiscal year end, June 30th. And you can see it works very easily. It selects the, the fields for you, and it's very smooth. So I calculated year-to-date. Now I want to know what was my previous year-to-date so I can do a comparison. Also very difficult in Excel. So with a one simple adjustment to the formula, you can do a date add. And this will allow me to move my date back a whole year on the same formula. And then I can see easily a comparison between last year to date and this year to date. Now we're going to get some more complex stuff. So we're going to go find the average selling price during that year. So you can do the basic divide. Or you can go down using an X formula and go down into, for every line item, find that calculation, that divide, and then do the average up, all the way up. Then you can even take it and move that average and push it back another year so you can see average selling price from the previous year versus the current year, using the same data add, but using it as a standalone filter, moving it back 12 months. My slides are in auto, so I have to speak really fast to keep up with them. I got a little break right here, so it's good. OK, so now I'm going to find the volume variance using that same sum x. So we're going to take the quantity total minus last year quantity and times it by the last year average price. That'll tell me what was my volume variance for that year. So you can see that I added some uh, conditional formatting, so you can kind of see that. So I have a total sales vo variance. Now what's the volume? Now I'm going to add pricing. And surprisingly, it works very similar. So you do average price versus last year average price times the quantity. Now I have the two combinations that make up my total sales variance very easily to, to create these. So I can understand now where my variance is coming from. This could also be done with a budget um, I'm using previous year. But I want to see now what is that variance as a percentage of my total so I can really, really do some comparisons. So I can use an all uh, filter within DAX, which will allow me to set up a base for that calculation. So I can take my volume variance and take the entire sales variance and tell me what percentage did that make up. After I got all those calculated, I can take the same exact formulas and then I can start drilling into them. I don't have to do any more calculations, no more formula writing, but I can start adding customer segments. I can start adding product segments. And this is all in Excel using a pivot table as, the, as a visualization. This uh, allows you then, you can even mix and match them. So if it's not just customer, it's not just product, maybe it's products to specific customers. So I have one business unit by um, the, the product lines. And so you can start seeing where the variances are coming from. Very capable. You can use formulas once and then drill down. My boss always asked me another question. After I answer one, he was always wondering what the next question is. He's always having a next question. So he wants to know who are my top 20 customers, maybe. So now you can add. On top of the same model, you can start adding in a ranking and grouping so you can start seeing comparison. A pivot table is only going to show you that top 20 and won't show you everything on the bottom as well. Using this formulas, which you can see here, I won't go into them because they're very complex. Um, well, they're not too complex, but they're, there's a lot to explain in 20 seconds. Uh, you'll be able to see your top 20 and then everything else underneath, all summed up. And there it goes. So you can see my top 20 customers and then all my other customers together, all on one pivot table, which is impossible using basic Excel. 
Then I can see, well, what's my top 20 products by, or top 20 customers by product? So I had a slicer. I can start picking through, you know, for this one product category, who are my top 20 customers? And I can do that for all my different items in there. So now we went from zero, and we're going to 100 right now. So I'm going to get into some data smoothing, some forecasting. So we're looking at total quantity, and you can see it's all over the place, but I want to see that overall trend. So I do a moving average. So a six months moving average. I can tell it to average up everything for the last six months and have it move along the whole chart, creating that average. And now I want to see some forecasting, so I add a linear regression. Now this is very complex. This one is very complex, uh, but it's very powerful. The nice thing is there's a lot of resources. You can take these formulas, copy them, and just make minor changes. And now I have a linear regression, so you can see the future. That same formula that I wrote once, I can now add in, well, I want to see my linear regression by my regions. So now you can see the sales by regions and a linear forecast based off the, that individual region. So you can start really drilling into it, what's driving my data, what's driving my sales and everything. Now if you get tired of Excel, you can move into the free Power BI desktop and you can harness the power of R. If you haven't used R, you should look into it. It's a very powerful language uh, for forecasting and statistics. So I have a, this is in Power BI desktop. You can create it very simply and then add filters so you can start drilling in. Um, lastly, where can you learn more about this? Because I went through it really, really fast. So DAX Patterns, Power Pivot Pro, SQL BI, YouTube, and the PowerBI.com communities are all free resources to use this free product if you're already using Excel. So this starts.